in your speech you mentioned that the opening uh, of facilities such as this is probably the most important thing for development of young football players. Was this the case when you were taking the first football steps in, in Ajax? Did you have your own apartment, teacher, special food, like the football youth of today? No, no, it wasn't uh, so organized as it is today. There was a good academy also in, uh, in Amsterdam with Ajax, but uh, I just lived at home, so I had to travel, so mm -hmm. you're losing a lot of time. But uh, yeah, that's, that, uh, that's what, how it was, so we couldn't change it at that moment. But I'm sure that uh, the situation now, especially what they have created here in Macedonia, will be a big, big uh, benefit for the football here, for the youth to develop them in the right way to become a good football player. You're now part of the FIFA administration, taking the position of Chief Officer for Technical Development. What does this position mean? Was it easier for you to score goals when you were playing or it's better now when you have to hold meetings and sign agreements? Uh, it's absolutely, uh, I think, more interesting and more enjoyable to play football. That's, the, that's by far the, 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 the most nicest thing. But now I have another um, homework to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, working with FIFA means that uh, I have to give the possibilities to different countries and associations to develop uh, their football in a better way. So it's, it's good for football to help uh, yeah, all of uh, the game. Um, Are you happy with your new role? Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, you see a lot of uh, new uh, faces and uh, yeah, you know, football, the world is big. So there are still a lot of countries who can really uh, uh, be helped by the FIFA to develop uh, the football in a better way. And that's our goal, to, uh, to get the football in all the countries, in all the world, to get people playing, playing the game mm -hmm. and enjoying the game. And so that is, uh, I think, uh, one of the, the main reasons of my job. How do you rate the chances of smaller football nations like Macedonia to qualify for a final tournament now at this point of overall football development? Yeah, I think that, uh, and that's also what I sa already said in the speech, that uh, the fact that uh, the people are so passionate about, uh, about football, uh, I think that is the, the major point. So when you watch as a child football and television and you see the big stars, mm -hmm. that's really what you want. The only thing what the, the country and the association can give is all the facilities mm -hmm. for these kids to play. So uh, they have to facilitate games and, 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 and material and all these things. And the, 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 the youth just has the, the passion to play, and that's the most important thing, I think. And uh, I have already uh, been here before, when I was a coach in, in Holland, and I've seen that the people here in Macedonia are really like football. So the youth are playing still on the street, they wanted the dreaming of becoming a football player, and I think that is the, the most important thing. Do you remember the result? Yeah, I remember. It was 2-2. And uh, I remember the, the, especially the two players like Pandev and, and Sirtiki, I think, Artim Sirtiki. Artim Shakiri. Yeah, he was the, was the captain and they were really uh, good and experienced players. And I remember also that the game was very difficult because Macedonia was not a really big country at that time. And, uh, so, but we had a lot of problems to, uh, to win the game, so we, we couldn't win the game. Actually, yes. Yeah, it was 2-2. Uh, Russia is hosting the FIFA World Cup this year. Is it strange for you that the Netherlands won't be part of this football spectacle? Are you Dutch people suffering for that? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. We are used to going uh, to normal to the the big tournaments, and uh, so now it's the second time in a row that we we are not there. So that hurts absolutely for the for the Dutch uh, football fans. And, and sports in general, it's a pity. But uh, you know, we are not as big as, as Germany, so we have also uh, go with the flow. So we have good times and bad times. And I remember when I was uh, 18, 20 years, we didn't even succeed to go to the tournaments in 86 and 84. So uh, yeah, that's just part of uh, of our uh, history. 
You were the national coach of the Netherlands. You were also coaching Heron Van Ajax. Do you still have coaching ambitions? No, no. I've done that. Uh, I've been four years a national coach of Holland. I've been in Ajax and Heerenveen and a part of uh, as, 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 as assistant also with the national mm -hmm. team. But uh, you know, I, uh, I've changed my uh, my direction. I'm now doing the work for FIFA. That's what I like. And uh, yeah, for me, the the job as a trainer is just uh, history. What does Marco van Basten see as his successor in today's modern football? Uh, who was your idol when you made your first first football footsteps as as a child? Yeah, when I was growing up, I was watching the football from Ajax and Feyenoord. At that time, the Dutch uh, clubs were v uh, very successful. Uh, so my idol was always uh, Johan Cruyff. He was mm -hmm. a big player, and I was uh, in the end of uh, my career. I was very proud that I have played with him and against him. I worked with him as a trainer. He was also my friend and we had a lot of discussions about football and he, he was my, my hero. And uh, yeah, I have had the luck to work with him a lot of uh, years. So it was uh, yeah, a pleasure that uh, I had all that time with him together. If you can choose your favorite goal, uh, what would it be? Yeah, I have, I have two goals in which uh, I think both are, are very special. The, f the first one is the goal that I uh, made against Russia in the final. Famous yeah, volley. That was a special, really special moment because it was also on the right spot, on the right moment. And so it was absolutely a dream. Yeah, but, but uh, you have yeah, you so need much time to yeah, do it. Yeah, you, you need a little bit of luck also. So and, and the second goal was uh, a goal when uh, I did uh, I did I don't know how to call it in English but it's like something like a, a bicycle so behind mm -hmm. against Den Bosch in in uh, in Holland and that was really uh, something what I was uh, trying and, and training when I was uh, a kid and in the end it came out on a game and it was also a perfect moment so these two things. Uh, were special to me because on the first part it was the moment making a goal like that in the final and the second one was yeah I think uh, physically and also sport wise it was a fantastic goal so technically it was uh, yeah I think uh, very nice to see. You have scored more than 300 goals in your career at the end at the age of I think 28 uh, you had to finish the career following a heavy ankle injury what that, does it feel like to understand that you can no longer play football also you know that you're one of the best football play players? Yeah, that was for me a very difficult time because uh, at that time I was playing uh, on the highest level in, the <coughs> in Europe and in the world and then all of a sudden I uh, got injured and uh, I couldn't come back. I never had uh, the thoughts before that I had to stop football. So in the beginning it was very difficult and I didn't really understand how it was possible that I couldn't come back because uh, I was uh, working also in Milan with a lot of intelligent and good and experienced doctors but uh, in the end we couldn't uh, manage to, to, to get back on the pitch and, and that was a hard time. So in the first years I, I really uh, was uh, disappointed and I I tried to do some other things like you know playing tennis or playing squash or playing golf or what else or skiing, but uh, yeah it was it was always difficult because football I was growing up with football and that was also the reason that I later came back into football as a coach. Is Lionel Messi the greatest player you have ever seen? Um, I don't know because uh, I have played with Maradona also and uh, what I also mentioned before, Johan Cruyff, uh, I played with him also. They were really, really great players and Messi is one of them. So uh, it's difficult to say because I think you're going to talk about um, uh, what kind of a player you like. But Maradona is, is a wonderful player, uh, Messi is a wonderful player, Cruyff was a wonderful player and there are a few Pelé. These are really special, special guys. And uh, yeah, absolutely messy. It's, it's, it's uh, wonderful to see him playing football. He's just uh, given by God that uh, yeah, he can do whatever he likes on, on the football pitch. So I think it's, uh, it's nice to see and uh, it's good for football that uh, there are still players like that on the pitch. Macedonia, 
Our country is very proud with the organization of the UEFA Super Cup. Real Madrid and Manchester United came to Skopje, creating a spectacle to, to remember for our country. Mm -hmm. How far is the day when the smaller country, one of them being Macedonia, can hope to co-host a World Cup in football? Uh, the ideas of, of uh, uh, Gianni Infantino to get the people more to all over the world, I think uh, there is more possibility than before. Although I know that uh, for small countries it's, it's not easy because the whole world is coming mm -hmm. to a country and that's a huge uh, amount of work. So uh, the fact that uh, there was already a UEFA uh, Super Cup here in uh, Macedonia was I think already a very positive thing and you know in the future you never know but um, the World Cup is getting bigger and bigger and you see also in the future that uh, countries like USA and America uh, and, and Mexico and, and, and Canada they are combining together to organize tournaments so maybe for smaller countries doing it together it's still possible to organize a, a big tournament like the World Cup. Thank you very much for this special moment. Mr. Van Basten, okay. now a few questions from my, from my colleagues okay. from Macedonia. As a representative of FIFA, can you tell us how you are prepared for the World Cup that is now in June in Russia and who are your favorite favorites? I think the preparation are going uh, well. Uh, we are all uh, looking uh, forward to uh, a big tournaments because uh, it's now only uh, three, mo uh, three months to come. So we are really thrilled that uh, the real moment is coming closer and closer and I think uh, till now we have worked hard as a FIFA but uh, we are satisfied and, and also uh, convinced that it will be a great tournament. And my favourite, uh, it's difficult to talk about favourite uh, because in the end I would like to, to give it to everybody. Uh, you know Russia with all its problems is always a, a, a huge football country it's, it's the, uh, the host, so it's important also that Russia is doing well on the World Cup, playing in Russia. So I hope that they will be uh, um, uh, good and uh, doing uh, well in the, in the tournament. But if you see the last World Cup, uh, Brazil was uh, playing in their own country and they didn't win. So I think they really want to uh, revenge of, of that uh, tournament. And I think they always uh, are... Uh, yeah, a, a big, a big country with big players, so they always have chance to winning a tournament like that. And I think, in the other hand, uh, a country like Belgium, which is not really a big country, uh, have a lot of good players. So also these uh, other countries, they still have a possibility to do something special in the World Cup. So I'm looking forward, and there are a lot of countries and and, and possibilities. Which one is going to be the worst one? Според много футболски аналитичари, Марко Ван Бастен е еден од најдобрите нападачи, ги спомена нели најдобрите фудбалери во светот, тој е еден меѓу врвните нападачи. Ме интересира неговото мислење што е пресудно, дали талентот или напорната работа за да станеш еден ден Марко Ван Бастен, ете да една порака за младите фудбалери во Македонија и од целиот свет. It's both. It's both. Um, um, you have to work well, you have to be passionate, um, you have to love the game, um, you have to be physically also uh, skillful and it's, it's a nice uh, thing. I'm, I'm watching now um, Cristiano Ronaldo, he's a very good player, but uh, it's not only about making goals, it's not only about his physical situation, it's not only about his technical skills, but you see that with the age, He's becoming more clever and clever, and the fact that he is always there making goals has nothing to do, as also to do with the fact that he is technically uh, good and he is physically uh, good. And, but it's also because he is knowing and reading the game in the right way. So he is really understanding what is the next step, and that's the reason I think that uh, he is still able to make a lot of goals and still able to make the difference in between. Uh, the one and two uh, uh, get, uh, teams to play against each other, and that's something special. Uh, what what is nice to see. Само да поменеш дали инстинктот е нај најважен за да видиш добар голкипер, значи најдобар. That's what a little bit. I think that you have to uh, create by yourself the feeling that you can already uh, see or feel the next step. 
So if you are thinking just a little bit uh, further and you uh, are using the spaces, because the spaces are so small now, and you are using the spaces in the right way and also your components, your, your, your colleagues understand the way you play football and give you the ball in the right moment, then uh, yeah, it, it's still uh, possible to make every time the difference. Сакав да направи една споредба на фудбалот во неговото време, кога тој играше и во Италија, и фудбалот кој се игра сега, и дали кога би можел да одбере, би сакал да игра повеќе сега или оно што го играл на време? The spaces where you can play is getting smaller and smaller. If you see a game now, um, then you see one team is just before the the penalty area with nine defenders, a goalkeeper, and a one maybe a, a forward player is around that. So the space of playing coming through a defence like that is very difficult and very small. So you need very good tactic, but you also need a very good way of knowing how to, to, to make a, a combination together to create any chances. So that's very difficult. So the football in that case is uh, becoming more and more difficult. So in our time there was more space, more possibilities, so that was uh, a little bit easier to make goals.